Welcome back friends, it's me, R. Dallas from Nimble Pros. In this series, we've been looking at implementing validation for our APIs. And in the most recent video, we saw how to build it into a chain of responsibility pattern implemented using mediator behaviors. So here you can see our validation behavior. And what happens is it goes and validates the request, whatever that object type is of that command or that query. And if it is invalid, it's going to throw an exception. Now this works great and it means that we don't have to put validation all over our code, but it does have one downside. And that is that we're just gonna bubble up an exception and return a 500 internal server error in response to any problems that we run into. Now, obviously we'd much rather return a 400 bad request with those details of what was wrong. So in this short video, we're going to show how to use the ourdallas.result return type to communicate back invalid information to the calling code and use that pipeline to do it. Now, if we look at our command, we can see it just has a name string and that's what we're validating on. We have a uh, handler here that just creates a contributor given that name. Now we want the validation to take place before we get here. We're using a library called fast endpoints at the uh, API level, and it already has built in support for this validation. So if you don't need validation at a lower level, you can just use this type of code here to implement that type of logic. And I would encourage you to do so. This works great at the API level. However, if you want to add additional validation inside of your use cases or application services layer, uh, maybe have something that's reusable outside of your web APIs or because it needs to access the domain model or the database even to perform some validation checks and you don't want that to happen at the DTO API layer, that's where you'd wanna have this mediator behavior style thing that we showed in the last video and that we're gonna enhance right now. So instead of throwing a validation exception, what we wanna do is if that return type supports including validation information in it, we're gonna return that instead. All right, so when this thing is called, this, this create contributor handler, notice the return type, all right? This handler is taking in a create contributor command, but it's returning back a result of int. So that integer is going to be the created items ID because it's a database generated key, but that result type is using this ourdallas.result library. And so by default, you can see that when everything goes well and it's successful, we can just return the thing that it wraps, in this case an int, without having to add any additional ceremony. But what if we had a problem? We want to say, well, you know, if there's a problem and we don't necessarily want to just throw an exception, we could say something like return uh, result dot, you know, critical error, let's say, because why not? And say, hey, there was a problem creating the item, right? Or failed to create contributor, like that, right? And so something like this is uh, very easily done with this library. And it also supports validation errors. And that's what we're gonna show here. So we'll leave it alone to just do the happy path. And the nice thing about using this type of pattern is that you don't clutter up your actual handlers or services with all that error handling logic or validation logic or other cross-cutting concerns. Those can all get moved into middleware in those behaviors. So we're gonna look at this behavior and we need to do a little bit of generic reflection code in order to make this work. So I'm gonna pull in some code that I've already got set up here and we just copy paste it. And instead of this block, we're gonna have now this chunk of code here. Now, the first thing you notice is that we're disabling nullable checks. That's because it was uh, being a little bit crazy with whether or not some of these types were, were null. I know they're not null when we get to this point, so I just turn it off. But in here, what we're checking is if the response is a generic type and if its generic type is of type of result of something, right? Then I know that I can grab an invalid result of that. And that's what this right here is doing, this get method. That's saying, go get me the method of result of T and let's make sure that it is the uh, invalid call that we're using. And then over here, we're gonna add in a list of invalidation errors. Uh, that's the parameter that we're gonna pass to it. Now, assuming that this method is not null, so we can find it, uh, we're going to return the invocation of this factory method, which is gonna create a result that includes the result errors that we've collected from Fluent Validation up here, All right? So we take the Fluent Validation results and we transfer them into our Dallas Validation errors, which is uh, in the our Dallas.result package, and then that's what we'll return. 
We'll also do it here if it's a non-generic result, so if it's just returning a result, which might be something that a void method would do uh, and didn't have a return type, then it would use that approach. And if it's not using a result type, then we'll use the same behavior we had before and we'll just return the validation exception. All right, so with that in place, we can go and check our uh, integration test for this and make sure that it's working correctly. So down here we have a create contributor command handler that's just doing a test of that handler and the mediator pipeline. So you can see here we're registering the validators that are gonna be used and we're also registering our generic pipeline with that validation behavior. And so when we send this command to create a contributor uh, and we pass it in an invalid command, we're expecting these validation errors will not be empty. And if we run these tests, we scroll back up here, uh, we should see that they all pass. Okay, so if we pass in a name of null or empty string or a single character or one that's too long, any one of those is going to result in validation errors occurring. Okay, that's great. So now let's uh, run the app. Now we get no content at all, and there's a reason for that. If we look at our endpoint code, you can see that it, if it is successful, it's going to return this contributor response with the created contributor. But if it's not successful, we don't do anything. We just have a to do here. And so to implement this, we need to add our own logic that's going to create the response that we need. And essentially what we're going to say is if our result has any validation errors, then we're going to go ahead and create an error response. We're going to pass in those validation errors to it. We'll manually set the status code to 400 and we'll output the result that we expect. So if we stop the application and run it again, then when we try to create this contributor one more time, you see we get a 400 bad request as we would expect with errors that tell us the name must be at least two characters, you entered one characters. So the same behavior that we would get if we were using this validator here that has that minimum length setting currently commented out. All right, you'll find a link to get yourself the source code in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope that if you like this, you'll click like and subscribe to get more notifications of additional videos. That wraps up this series on validation. Next week, we're going to look into something new. Hope to see you then. Until then, keep improving.